or I've learned a lot today about new nuances and things to take home about metrics. I've even learned about what the meaning break a leg means. Uh, so it's been a good day for uh, lo lots of uh, learnings. Um, so I'm going to talk about the application of health metrics from uh, the ecosystem part of literature and uh, on a cross-sectoral software ecosystem. So and this software ecosystem I'm talking about, it, it has actors both from the private and public sector. It's initiated and facilitated by a big Swedish agency called the Swedish Public uh, Employment Service. So they are responsible for uh, enabling job seekers and employers to, to meet each other and help, hence trying to reduce the unemployment rate in Sweden. So with this ecosystem they want to release, create a platform uh, with open, da open government data, open source software and enable um, actors within the job tech space to create better services and products that can help or improve the digital matchmaking on the Swedish labor market. Uh, quick bio, uh, I did, I've done a PhD, finished uh, this autumn, focused on what companies should share as open source, how to engage in communities in ways that align with their business goals. So since October I've been involved in this project, it's a two year project together with the employment service. So my, my role is doing something called action research, so both helping, trying to, uh, helping them adopt best practices in terms of uh, developing open source and, uh, and community adopting these practices, but also trying to find a model or lessons learned for other organizations within the um, public sector to, uh, to adopt in, in their own digital transformations, adopting this platform uh, ecosystem concepts usually uh, applied within the private sector. But first, what do I mean by ecosystem? So, it's a metaphor taken from biology introduced to explain business ecosystems or software ecosystems as I'm talking about. So I, I thought I'd use uh, the Android ecosystem as a referral here uh, when explaining. So a software ecosystem is a set of actors um, that's functioning and working uh, as a unit and they're interacting uh, through a, a shared market of software and services and the relationships among them. And then this, these ecosystems are underpinned by some kind of technological platform. So this platform could be one or a series of technologies, products or services that brings everyone together, solving a common problem, uniting everyone under a common vision. And in the Android case, this technology platform would be the Android op op uh, operating system and uh, software development kits that allows developers to, to, to develop apps that they then can sell on the common market, the Play Store. And this ecosystem, it's governed by Google, which we can refer to as the platform leader, who basically steers the, the roadmap and the development of the platform, and also sets the rules for the market and so on. So in our case, uh, this ecosystem is called JobTech Dev. So JobTech is the space for all of the actors trying to use uh, digitalization and digital services to improve the way you're working. Um, so, as I said in the beginning, the, 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 the vision here uh, by uh, the employment service is to create this platform to enable third parties to create better services and products, hence getting more a better matchmaking, <coughs> digital matchmaking on the Swedish labor market. Uh, quick review of the, of the platform. It's, basically free uh, open government data pools and, and a bigger open source project. So the first one, taxonomy, it's, it's, uh, it's a taxonomy of common wording and labels for skills, job titles and relationships among them, making sure everyone speaks the same language. Um, it's a job, a pool of job ads, so they're basically for scraping and for partnerships. They're um, aggregating all of the job ads on the Swedish labor market and then making them available to all of the ecosystem companies or uh, organizations. And then job take my data, so that's basically your CV data that's built, uh, it's a solution built on the my data principles, so basically it's you who own the, the data, so or the CV data. So you can log into a website, say 
update your CV and then say that, okay, this should be reflected on LinkedIn and this site and this site. But then, and then, but then you can revoke the data from LinkedIn, for example, and they can no longer read your data. So it's a way of giving your ownership of the data. And then on top there's a, a search engine solution built on Elasticsearch. So all of the companies don't have to build their own search engine, which a lot of them, a lot of them have done. <coughs> so currently, there hasn't been that much. Most of it, ha most of this platform has been developed by the agency themselves. There has been some contributions, both in terms of uh, of the data sets, uh, enriched and new ones, and uh, software as well as in uh, widgets, uh, example applications, and so on. But I hope is to, to get this growing, this ecosystem. Looking at the actors, it's, it's, it's a lot of actors from a lot of different niches or areas. So it's not just those working with recruitment and matchmaking. It's also insurance companies, uh, some uh, op operating with uh, career guidance or education guidance, local, regional, and national government, trade unions. So th there's a lot of different interests, a lot of different use cases. So so not, not all of them are interested in all, all parts of the platform. So let's move on to, to the main topic. So along with the concept of ecosystem comes the, the concept of ecosystem health. So we can use it as a, as a key performance indicator basically for the ecosystem's um, ability to, to uh, provide uh, sustainable growth of a longer period of time, but also to, to create opportunities for the different actors within the ecosystem. And also building on, uh, on the ecosystem health literature from, from uh, biology and so on, it can be further ca characterized through the three dimensions of productivity, robustness, and niche creation. So with productivity, I'm referring to the ecosystem's ability to create new, fun new and improved functionality based on the, the input of material. So in our case, that would be the ability of matchmaking companies or insurance companies or governments being able to create new and improved services or in other ways improved operations based on the data, for example, that's provided. Looking at robustness, looking at the ecosystem's ability to withstand uh, or survive shocks and disruptions. So in, in um, our case, that could be one or two of the, of the key actors within the ecosystem um, with a lot of dependencies on them, dropping out or drawing bad PR to the ecosystem, or maybe the public employment service reorganizing because it's, and, and th this is high risk because the public employment service is under a lot of heat from both from media and uh, politicians, so they're being ping pong back and forth about how they should look like and how they should operate, so that's a big threat here. Uh, and then niche creation, which um, refers to the ecosystem's ability to attract a diversity of actors focused on different niches in terms of their value creation. So that would, would in this case, for example, be the matchmaking companies, the, those working with recruitment, insurance companies, and so on. So as we've seen all through the day, you should always start with a goal. So the main goal of the employment service, they want to reduce the employment rate. They want more job seekers and employees to meet each other and match. <coughs> so, and and uh, through this, they want to improve the digital matchmaking and guidance uh, by enabling actors within the ecosystem to, uh, within the job tech space, to improve their services. Uh, and here comes the concept of the ecosystem, looking at, at the ecosystem. So they want to improve the ecosystem health, hence improving the, its productivity, robustness, and niche creation. So I'll return to this uh, later on. So what we did through interviews, uh, we tried to elicit different kinds of metrics within these three categories. And um, so they've, we collected them and, uh, and uh, they've undergone internal scrutiny. So the idea is to have some kind of baseline for how the ecosystem develops, how its activity develops and so on. And uh, looking at productivity, we're looking at metrics that can exemplify 
uh, some kind of growth from, from a period in time. So this could, for example, be visitors to maybe not the main website, but to more technical parts like the documentation pages for the APIs, for example, or the number of checked out API keys and API keys that are being used. We, we are also looking at the activity on ticket support and communica communication channels. Discourse and Slack are, are the ones used mainly. Uh, and uh, also fiscal meetings, because they do a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings. And then contributions, here we do differentiate between three kinds of contributions. So knowledge contributions, which could be answers to questions, reports, um, data, uh, contribution, new or enriched data sets, which there has been some of, and then the more technical ones, which can be more characterized from the open source space, like code commits, test, test cases, technical uh, documentation, or uh, design inputs, and prioritization inputs, and so on. And then metrics, where we look at how new applications get, uh, of the data comes up which doesn't have to be aligned with the number of actors or users of the ecosystem or the platform. Looking at the robustness, so here we're more looking at the size of the ecosystem. So a bigger ecosystem, more actors, the ho is hopefully means that it will be more stable and more can withstand sh these shocks and disruptions in a better, in a better uh, uh, way. So here we're looking at the actors, for example, what size are they and how mature are they looking, for example, in, um, at their turnover or uh, years of acti um, years being around and um, how active they are. In, in uh, the rest of the cases, most of the metrics are usually the same as in, uh, in regards to productivity, but here we're looking at the absolute number, so total number of contributions, for example, uh, of the data sets. Looking at niche creation, looking at more at, at the diversity of the actors within the ecosystem, more of the, of the, the, the solutions here. So, uh, what kind of areas of operations? How many how many actors do we have that are working with matchmaking? How many do we have that's working with recruitment? How many do we have that's uh, insurance firms or national uh, government agencies? what kind of solutions or use cases do they have. So it's kind of tracking how new ones get added and how many ones are, are active in the, in, the, in the different niches here. So lessons learned. Um, a lot of these metrics requires a lot of upfront investment. We need to have a lot of good knowledge about the community, about the different actors, uh, about the yeah, for example, in what field they're in. Are they working with recruitment or are they an insurance company? What kind of technical applications are, there, are they doing? As, so this requires a lot of research. So this has not been done from, from start, but they're now they're doing this research, trying to categorize and get more info and knowledge about the, about the actors. So, and it's this thing you, the metrics can only provide you with an input. And you, you, you can't focus on one metric, and if you have a tons, tons of them, you'll run, drown, so you need some kind of balance here, getting the right amount and trying, trying to use them to draw up a picture. And you should use that picture as an input to your qualitative knowledge about the ecosystem and about the different actors. So that's why it's, it's important here to have a good stakeholder analysis. Uh, and knowledge about everyone in the ecosystem. And also trying to, to find the right abstraction level. So right now, most of the metrics are focused on the ecosystem level, so covering uh, actors or companies, organizations, on a gen general basis. Are they contributing at all to any of the different parts? Uh, how are they, are they interacting with the developers on a general basis, on a network basis? But as this progresses, it may, may make more sense to also look at each individual project like the search engine, for example, or as new software projects get added or each data pool 
to look at these sub-communities you could call them. So more on project level. But then a, a big challenge is knowing, okay, so this ecosystem health concept. So we can know that we have a healthy ecosystem where, where everyone is thriving and so on, but does that actually lead to improved digital services and actually having an effect on, on the labor market? I mean, th these things are very important, especially in a, in, a political, in, a, in a public organization where you have politicians that are very keen on drawing money from you if you don't perform. And uh, so we're, we're trying to identify and, and investigate, trying to create these impact metrics that can explain if, if these ecosystem metrics have has an impact. So uh, we're, gonna, we're starting a collaboration with Stockholm School of Economics where we're going to look at the different actors, trying to identify performance objectives among the different actors and see, and, and then trying to elicit KPIs so we, we can link the actual impact with these ecosystem metrics that's describing the more operational context. Um, yeah, a way for all try to follow up and revise these ecosystem metrics. So this is a two-year project. I'm helping them, adv I'm adv advising them. Uh, I want them to, to succeed, but we need so, to have some kind of baseline so that I w while I'm documenting how I'm helping them or how they are improving or adapting their practices, we need to know where or in what direction they go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have 60 seconds or? Sure. Yes. One question or two. One question or two. Crystal clear. Cool. Is any yeah. of the work being done that is going to be open sourced as well? Or? So, all of the work, do you mean the KPIs? Yeah, all of those things. Yeah, yeah of course. The hope is to, to have um, full transparency. Cool, thanks. <laughs>